uh, on YouTube as well as Vimeo, yeah, right? Yeah, YouTube, Vimeo. Vimeo and YouTube, yeah. So you, you should see uh, you know, his works after, after this session, okay? Now he's going to uh, teach us like, you know, from photography to cinematography. He's a full-time cinematographer now. Yeah? Yes. Thank you very much, man, for thank coming you. and uh, sorry for no, getting a little late no. and, uh, you know, you yeah. enjoy. Thank you. Thanks. Assalamu alaikum. That's a popular trend, I think, yeah? Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, can I know who, uh, who will need Arabic? Who will need Arabic? Okay, okay, English, English is fine. Okay, great. Uh, I'm talking to you uh, today about my transition from photography to cinematography. Or how to benefit from your passion. The thing is, I've been a photographer since 2008, uh, and I realized that things keep changing. Platforms keep changing. Back in the days, if you are old as me, you will remember Flickr. You will remember 500px. You will, you will remember a lot of platforms that they are not that popular today. 11 years ago, I started in Instagram. It was my escape from Facebook and Twitter to image oriented world. Uh, before I start anything, I'd like to ask you, how can you define yourself? Know thyself. Are you a photographer? Are you a videographer? Are you a filmmaker? Are you a creative director? Are you editor, retoucher? Are you one man crew? Because without knowing yourself, without knowing, without being, I'm Photographer. I am videographer. Without being, there is no doing. If you cannot define yourself properly, you will never be able to do your job properly. You will find a lot of quotes here in this presentation. I love this one because this one is describing he says that a man or a woman who works with his hands is a laborer, is a worker. A man who works with his hands and his mind is a craftsman, is an artisan. But a man who works with his hands and brain and his heart is an artist. Do you, do you consider yourself an artist? This is your... To tell. I've always believed that there is no one path to the top of the mountain. There is a lot of ways. So today's world is not particular or not obligating you to take one path. Some people are specializing in photography. Some people are specializing in specific branch in photography. Like I'll be shooting only weddings. I'll be shooting only events. I'll be shooting only babies. I'll be shooting only food. Some people are doing videography, some people are doing both. Some people are doing photography, retouching, videography, editing, etc. So, when you know yourself, when you can choose your path, it will be easier. It will be easier because they say some, sometimes a man or a tiger chases two rabbits, he will catch none. But today, is, we have to adapt to the need of the the clients, to the need of the market. I'll recommend a lot of books. This book is a very good one about the generalist. This definition, the, the generalist. A man who can do more than just one job. How, and can how, how can he triumph in a specialized world? The questions that I ask myself, why do I have to change? I was very accomplished as a photographer. I was a celebrity photographer in Egypt, and I was very well known with my photography. But the thing is, when I came here, and even when I was in Egypt, the demand was different. The demand, now the client is what he wants and requests a photographer, a videographer, a graphic designer, an editor, a motion graphic designer, and maybe a director, scriptwriter, copywriter, 
and you name it, Office Boy. So <laughs> you need to know why you are changing. Start always with why. Because if you don't know why you are changing, in the middle of the way, uh, in the middle of the way, you will lose interest. You will lose your power. You will lose it, it's it's tough road. And also another question is very important. Am I satisfied? Are you satisfied with your current status? Are you ha happy with your current clients? Are you happy with your income? Are you happy with your equipment? If you are not, you need to change. I like this quote from Henry Ford, the, found, the founder of Ford, the car manufacturer, the famous one. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. The thing is, if you are not happy with your clients and your income and blah, 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 or your even equipment, because you are doing the same thing, if you want to get something, something different, you have to change. And I love this definition from Einstein for intelligence and for insanity. The measure of intelligence is the ability to change, to adapt. Some people are, are saying that adapt or die. There is no in between. And Einstein says also, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you are doing the same thing and you are complaining that I don't have enough clients, I don't have enough money, I cannot upgrade my equipment, you have to do something differently. When TikTok invaded our social media, the tycoon, the, the, the giant made uh, an Instagram, Facebook, they got a, a huge hit. They can, they can say, no, no, we are the big guys, we are the big boys, and we will not adapt to the new trend of TikTok Reels. But they adapt because they knew if they didn't adapt, people will ditch them. They will delete the application. So in July 2020, the last year, they started their Reels just to compete with TikTok because the market share of social media of the mobile use is was unbalanced. TikTok take a lot to already took a lot from their clients. Our we are already using our time to pay them. So they pushed the reels and they made a lot of trends. They pushed a lot to just compete to adapt to the, the new need. And it wasn't just Instagram and TikTok. Now also, YouTube is providing, trying to compete in this market share because YouTube is for, for long videos, but now they have YouTube shorts also. Uh, I love also this quote from Robin Sharma that change is hard at first. The, first. the very first job for me as a videographer, I was like, I don't know how to do it because I used to, for years, use my my camera for doing photos. It's totally different settings, totally different mechanism. You are not just expressing or telling the story with still photos. It's not anymore just one, mem one moment. You have to build the story scene by scene, not just frame by frame. And also with camera movement and color and composition. So the change is, change is hard at the beginning messy in the middle and gorgeous at the end. This is quote also from uh, uh, Charles Darwin. You know, the survival is the fittest. So he says that it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the intelligent, the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. I think the, the only constant thing in the whole history is change. The history itself is study of change, change of empires, rise and fall, change of the habits, the behavior, everything from the human being and to civilization. Well, why do I have to learn? Again, why? Because, and I asked the, myself the question in reverse. What's the cost of not learning? If I stayed stubborn, no, I'm okay, I will not learn. I think. My, my simple answer, I'll be out of the game. If I, I'm a, I'll be a fossil, a dinosaur. I'll, I'll, literally, I'll be out of the game. I'll, I'll be out of the business. So do you remember this stuff, guys? I, I, <laughs> I call myself old. 
when I saw this, I feel I felt very nostalgic because I used all of this. Maybe not the pager, but all of them. Back in the days, I used floppy disks to transfer data, fax machines, cassettes. I still have some, and VHS. Everything, even the overhead projector in my college, this was the only multimedia device. <laughs> but now, all of these are obsolete. We are not using this anymore. Just about 10 to 15 years, this man, cameraman, in helicopter was the only way to have aerial shots. But now we have drones. And this man and the pilot, they totally lost their jobs. If this man didn't learn how to use drone, halas, end of story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope I hope is operating the drone because operating the drone needs another skill, not just holding the camera. I love this my Anglo uh, quote. I did this. Do your best till you know better, and when you know better, do better. Because actually, when I look back. Just one year ago, to my work, I don't like my work anymore. I feel like if I do it now, I'll do it better. And I see if I feel that this is the top, this is the maximum that I can make, I feel after this, I have to decline. It will not be exponential growth. It will be decline. Picasso is one of my great uh, inspiring artists. He says that. Learn the rules. You have to learn the rules. I, I went to film school for four years just to learn the rules. When I was uh, applying for film school, the professors told me, they knew me. Why you are applying? One of them, he didn't know me. Why you are asking him the, like this? He told him he's a big photographer. And he told him, if he's a big photographer, what the fuck he's doing here? He goes, it's, it's important to know. You cannot know, you cannot learn. The thing that you think you know, you need to unlearn. You need to be humble, to be open, to learn. Humility is very important. You will not, you will never able to be, you will be able to learn new things if you are not willing to look stupid, look foolish, look clumsy, look clueless. Uh, when adversity hit, Go out and learn something. When Corona comes, I stayed at home, jobless, because I was shooting mainly events. There is no events. We are all, all quarantined at home, and there is no work. I started teaching. I already started teaching before, but I started to learn how to teach online, remotely. This is how I survived this month. It was horrible. And I am thankful that I was able to adapt, to learn something that can generate revenue or make a living. Uh, this actress, uh, Natalie Portman, she's, uh, she's saying that I don't love studying. I think no, no one really loves studying except I hate studying, but I like learning. Learning is beautiful. W when you learn something, you, you will find this. But we, got, we, we, we were taught in the schools in the wrong way, that we have to memorize, we have to study, and we have to write down in the exam, but learning. Actually, education is the ability to meet life situation. If you are illiterate and you are in the street, you cannot even know the, where is this bus is going? What is the sign is saying? If you are in the position that you are obliged to use a new camera and you are not you are not familiar. You don't know how, how to operate this camera. I, I've been there, I've been in this situation, and I've been always Canon user. I used Canon. I used, in, in film school, I used Arri. I used Blackmagic. I used even Nikon sometimes, and so on. But one time, I used, uh, I was in, uh, in, a, in a shooting, and the producer rent a Panasonic camera, GH5. And I was totally clueless, because the, the menu is different. But if you know the basics, if you know totally clueless because the, the menu is different. But if you know the basics, if you know your craft, you will manage. I managed, alhamdulillah, and the, the, the shooting went, went well. This is very important for me that there is a thin barrier between pure academia, pure education, 
and what you are going to do with this education. I believe that you need, as this man Herbert Spencer said, the great aim to, of education is not knowledge, is action. You have to take an action after you know. In Arabic, we have a saying says that عرفت فلزم. If you knew this, you have you are obliged to do with the with your knowledge, with the new knowledge. Because if you didn't if you didn't know, it's fine. But if you already know, Allah, we 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 have learned in the film school that there is no excuses in art. If you put your art out for like publishing or uh, printing your photos, you cannot tell everyone. Oh, please forgive me because the horizon line is tilted. You know that horizon line, it, it's better to be like this. You know, you know, you knew, already knew the rules. There is no excuse. After you already published your work for the, the, for the public, it's finished. I think one of the essential things for growth is to have role models, to have mentors. One of my mentors, this man is Ahmed Morsi. He's a great cinematographer. He's been featured by Ari, the great uh, camera manufacturer. He is a member of Canadian Cinematography uh, Society of Cinematographers. He is uh, when um, he has won a lot of awards for his work, and I've been honored to work with him. And I will ask any one of you, oh, every one of you, who is your mentor, who is your role model. Because if you don't have role model, you don't have to, someone to look up for, it will be difficult to, to improve, to grow. You have to, for, for my perspective, you have to see some people that doing the work that you want to do and get inspired. What are my dreams, my goals? I want to win the Oscar, like Sir Roger Deakins. I want to go for international film festivals, I want to do movies that won a lot of prizes and won to Cannes, to Venice, to Berlin, to Toronto, whatever. But this is my goal. But everyone must ask himself what I'm doing currently, daily, to achieve them. What do I do? I have an action plan? Do I keep a record to measure my progress or not? Do I have the right habits? Because actually, success is the sum of the habits, of the daily habits. Quickly, when I advise my, my colleagues, maybe the, the client or your colleagues are demanding or advising you, go this way or go that way. But if you don't find your own voice, you will, like Mr. Shukla said, that it's, it's one life. It will not, you will not have another repetition. It's only once. So if you live according to another agenda, to other people's agenda, you will feel in the, in the midway that you are not motivated anymore to continue. You will be burnt out. You will, you will be just an employee. I think creativity and being employed being employed is doesn't doesn't mix doesn't mix doesn't match. You have to be. I, I don't say that employers or employees are not creative, but being an artist obliged you, or it's it's necessary for an artist to have this freedom, freedom of choice. If you find in yourself that you want to want to shoot only food photography, or jewelry, or or landscape. People will tell you who will pay you to shoot landscape. Go shoot weddings. Weddings are bread and butter. The money is good. But if you shoot landscape and you got featured by National Geographic, game is over. You are already there. Done. Um, one of my great quotes is, to get what you love, you must first be patient with what you hate. Studying was hard at High, Film, uh, High Institute of Cinema. It was difficult to, to be disciplined. Doing jobs just for living. We all have bills. We all, it's, it's not utopia. We all have to do some jobs that is for us is meaningless. But you, if you didn't do these jobs, you will never be able to buy a new 
equipment, a new camera equipment, the, the, the camera that will enable you to achieve your dreams. You will never be able to sustain a living. You will, ne you will never be able to continue in this infinite game. Always, I, I'm always asking myself, what are my incentives? What will motivate me? What will keep me motivated? But I found that motivation is a little bit overrated. More than motivation, I need, and we all need discipline, commitment. Because actually, if it's based on the mood, I, I think I'll be working one day in the, in the year. But if you are committed, if you are disciplined that you will work whether you are sick, you don't feel like it, you are in a bad mood, you are whatever. I remember I was, uh, I had an accident in August 2019 and I already had an agreement that I will shoot a wedding in September. And the doctor told me, that I, I broke my uh, shoulder, the doctor told me never Never, ever move your arm. And I did it because I, I was, it, it was a commitment. I already took a deposit and I gave them my word and I went, it, it wasn't in Cairo, it, it was in Hargada. And I took the flight and I did the shooting and after the shooting, my arm was like this. Because it was just pinned with this bone with just one screw. And I was like, and, and after this, the doctor told me, Yani. It's, it's a miracle that the, the operation, because I had a huge surgery and the plate and everything, it didn't fall off or uh, some stitches were. But I did it and, and I'm very proud that I did because it, it showed me that I'm strong enough and my self-image is intact because I kept my integrity. I kept, because it's a re reputation. If you let down your one client, imagine that you ate some bad meal here in the food court. You will go all over the Emirates, don't go to Bergeman, the food is, is bad. It gave me st stomach ache. But imagine the opposite. I love this man, Richard Avedon, he's a great photographer, he's a French one, he's a great fashion photographer. He said that it's not hard being great occasionally. It's difficult to be good consistently. Th this man was working for Vogue for uh, Elle, for Mary Claire, for Cosmopolitan, for the uh, Harbour's Bazaar, for the great fashion magazines from the 30s through the 90s, 60 years in the field. He didn't, if, if, he, if he is moody, if he went like have good photo one year or one month and another month or another year, another good photo, he will never make it. You have to be good consistently. And also, I said motivation is a little bit overrated. Motivation is what gets you started. But in the middle of the road, it's, it, it, it's, not, um, it's not exciting anymore. It, you lose your enthusiasm, you lose your passion. So habit and discipline and commitment, that will keep you going. Do you remember this? Uh, in the very first year, in the very first day in our school, they told us about this ambitious and hardworking turtle and this lazy and, uh, <laughs> and self-confident and uh, arrogant uh, rabbit. Do you remember the end of the story? The turtle won the, the race. Uh, I have to tell you that one of the things that uh, is very difficult for the artist is the ego. If your ego is big or bigger than your humility and discipline and your true art, you are doomed. Because ego really is your, your greatest enemy. Ego will prevent you to go for small jobs. Ego will prevent you to learn. Ego will prevent you to, to grow. Because you already you know everything, you, you, made your, you are making your own cheese, you, you don't need any help. Ego will prevent you from help. Help is very essential to grow. What do we need or what, what do I need to learn? As a photographer, uh, I will not 
tell you about the shutter speed and the lenses. And I'll, I'll tell you about investment. I've learned the hard way when you invest in the equipment, in the gear, without knowledge, it will cost you more money. It will cost you a lot because you will, I did this. Wow, this is, this is the new lens, I'll get it. When I get it, I get, once I got 600, 1,200 uh, 1, lens, it was mirror lens, and I'm not shooting birds, I'm, I'm shooting only weddings. If I want to use this lens, I will tell the bride and groom, go to the al -Sif to shoot them, yani, from not here, <laughs> I have to send them very far. I didn't use it at all. I, I bought a lot of lenses very expensively, and I sold them very cheap, and it's, it's very, very difficult for me as a beginner to get a new lens, but to make this mistake told me or taught me that I need to invest in learning. Not invest in Canon, excuse me, Hamdi, but I love, I love, I love knowledge. I love, when you know better, literally you, know, you, you do better. So after this, I got exactly what I need. If I'm shooting portraits, I'll need this lens, nifty 50, then 85, then 135. If I, if I'll print my photos, I'll use 5D, R, uh, was 5D RS, or maybe R. So, if you know exactly what you need, you will buy exactly what you need. Also invest in, in knowledge of the market. Not only your craft, you will need to know how to negotiate with clients. You will need to know how to sell yourself. You will need to know how to market yourself, self-branding, because now if you are not comfortable promoting yourself, how do you think, how do you think the other people that they know, they don't know you at all, and they are not friends and family, they are not your mom, and they are not your siblings, and they are not your friends that you are shooting for free, how can they will give you money? How they will trust you? You have to be self-confident and you have to promote yourself because you already believe in your talent and you believe in your capabilities to deliver. And I'm saying this because a lot of us doing the same mistake that we are scrolling social media, we are seeing a lot of people work and we are saying or telling a lie to ourselves that we are getting inspired, we are learning from these people. But actually, we are, yani, this is a trap if you are consuming more than you are producing. You have to practice more than you learn. We learn in the school like a couple of years and we are graduate and we have a, a lifetime to practice. We don't have all the time in the world to just consume, just to learn new tricks. You have to apply, you have to practice. And theory versus practice, I, th I think the most important skill is not to fail, uh, not to be afraid to fail. Fail big, fail a lot. Because when, when they asked Edison, you, you achieved the lamp, the, the, the invention of the electricity after like 1,000 trial and failure. He told him, I discovered a 1,000 way that it doesn't work. He saw it positively. You need to, saw, to see failure. Also, Quentin Tarantino, the film director, he said that I worked for three years on a film in 16 millimeter lens uh, film, and this film, was only useful as guitar picks. He, he used the film for just playing guitar. He threw it. He said that th these three years was my, cinema, my film school. This was his learning. And we all have this guess, gear acquisition syndrome, that we all have this eagerness to, oh my goodness, this is our new tool. I need it. You don't need it, you want it. It's fine. But you have to know that, I'm coming to you in the next slide, that you will work a lot to get this. The price is your time, your lifetime. Any price you are paying for anything is your lifetime. This man, practice makes perfect. There is only, always, 
two ways to conceive or to understand things. Some people are saying practice makes perfect, and this man says that practice doesn't make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. If you are practicing the wrong way, you will keep doing the wrong things, and you will never learn. You need to know why, what is the best practice by learning, by shadowing a mentor, by following whatever uh, instructor. You have now unlimited access to jobs. This man is telling you Warren Buffet is a billionaire. If you buy things that you don't need, soon you will have to sell things you need. I did this. When I came here, my wife was a witness. I had to sell my camera and three lenses because I wasn't, I wasn't able to manage my finance. Every, every penny that I, I was completely transferring or buying new equipment. But you need to have this balance. To invest in your gear and to invest in other uh, money assets. A lot of quotes, I, as, as you see that I love quotes. But generally, it's, it's about continuing grinding, continuing thriving, continue, continuing working, continuing failing, continuing doing mistakes. Because if you don't do mistakes, you are not learning anything. You are not doing anything. These are my suggestion as uh, books to read, it's not about photography, it's not about cinematography, it's about sales, it's about thinking. I can share with you this presentation, it's about negotiation, it's about investment. If you know all of these stuff, you already, I know, you are people, you are amazing job, amazing photos, you are already professional, but maybe, I'm talking from my experience. Maybe you are not that educated when it comes to money, to investment, to marketing, to self-branding. The sources that I get my knowledge is YouTube, you know it, you name it. Books, YouTube, it's now all over the place that people are showing tutorial. So knowledge is not anymore uh, rare. Who is your target audience? This is very important. Your target audience is not your you have to know yourself. You have to know your target audience. Your target audience, maybe they are not your fans, you're not your friends and family. Maybe your target audience is an employer, a CEO or HR manager that he will never follow you in social media. But you need to approach him differently. Maybe he's like, if you are shooting wedding, you need couples. If you are shooting food photography, you need restaurants. If you are shooting equipment or uh, jewelry, you, you need to go to jewelry people. Know your audience. If you know yourself what, the, what kind of work that you love to do, you will know your audience. If you know your audience, you will keep your audience happy. I love this because that <laughs> it was, it's showing that the customer is remembering the brand with excellent customer service. If you don't know your audience very well, your client will be unhappy. You have to be, the client, we always make jokes and memes about the client that he doesn't know or they doesn't know what they need. Their basic, basic needs, they need you to be punctual, on time. They need you to be consistent. You need you to be honest. When you say, you will do. When you say that your deadline is Thursday, please deliver on Thursday. And you need to be Caring, if the client like this, if Shaji hired me to cover this event, he already bothered to rent this restaurant and bring all and invite all of these people. So he is expecting you to be on time, to be punctual, to be caring, that you will be attent uh, attentive to the details. And over deliver. If he wants one video and 100 photos, deliver 200 photos, three videos, if you can do it. If you are setting a target more than the client wants and you deliver, the client will be happy. If the client will be happy, guess what? He will call you again. And he will tell his friends about you. And if the client is very satisfied and very successful, if I am now hired by Shaji because I am promoting his brand, if his brand is successful, if he is getting more money because now he invested in you, like he gave you a thousand dirham, and this video that you made, Promoted for his 
equipment and his goods, and he is gaining revenue like 10,000, 100,000 dirhams. Next job, you can ask him for 2,000 dirhams because he's successful. You need to help people with your talent. If you help people with, with, with your talent, they will be gladly helping you. They will help you, they will raise. A lot of my clients are raising my fees from themselves. I, I, I really suck about <laughs> negotiating my fees, but they already, like 1,000 this time, 1,500. I remember the very first job that I, I, I was professional photographer, 2008, I took 100 Egyptian pounds, me guinea, 100 Egyptian pounds. I was shooting vase, vases for my, uh, my friends um, or my colleague wife. And years, years and years, they, they, a lot, they hired me a lot, like uh, the wedding of her brother. Last year, she told me I'm now working at school at Charger. Can you please come and do us a commercial, TV commercial? I did a TV commercial for 5,000 dirhams. I was like, I remember 100, 100 Egyptian pounds, like 20 dirhams. <laughs> and and 5,000 dirhams is a huge leap for me. Maybe some people are doing, doing it for 50,000 dirhams, but if I did very bad job in, the, in, in 2008, she will never call me back in 2022, never. So I believe that if you don't have integrity, never, Never, no one will t will call you again. I love this lady again. I she she said that people will always forget what you said, what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. If the bride and groom felt that you are treating them like faceless people, like groom, bride, not Joan or Mary or uh, Fatima or Muhammad, if you made them feel that you care, they will remember you. If you made, me, made them feel that you are careless, you don't care any, you are not giving them any attention, you are doing, just doing the job without creativity, without caring, without like, here's your photos and they will never remember or never call you back. And this man, Ansel Adams, don't take photography, you are making photography, you are making photographer from all the human experience you have. What you read, what you love, it's, 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 it's there. You are seeing, you are producing, you are showing people what you see. Finally, this Andy Warhol said, don't think about marketing or, ma or sorry, making art. Just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it, while they're deciding, make more art. Just make more art. Thank you guys. This is me if you're watching. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Any questions? And thank you, Mr. Shukla, for the for the inspiring talk and everything. Thank you so much. It's an honor to share the stage with you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Instagram. This is my award that I have from him. BBC is mine. <laughs> This photo taken by this man, also. He's our, and this is my Instagram and Vimeo. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> selfie, so, uh, take selfie with you guys. Uh, Shaji, can you please come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This selfie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Shashi. Thank you very much. I, I had to admit, I could not attend your session because a lot of people were just uh, saying, uh, you know, bye yeah, and all. Sure, sure. Yeah, but for sure, we'll have to have one proper workshop with you. My pleasure. Anytime. Uh, one proper workshop, one full day of workshop with you. Anytime. Okay. Anytime. And uh, thanks everyone for uh, participating today. Once again, my love. <laughs> Ramesh Sav and Taru Ma'am. I love you. <laughs> of course, I love everyone. And uh, let us take a group picture. Yeah, please. Yeah. So we'll go outside and we'll yeah. take a group picture. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, uh, I captured a video. I can share it with you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Habib, no more. Yeah. Please let us take a group picture outside. Uh,